Did you know that you can stream the best of HBO shows and more with the new Astro? Better than before, no rain interruptions, no repeats, just stream anytime and on demand via the Astro Ultra Box. It starts from only RM5990 a month, and you can find out more information at astro.com.my. You're listening to the Goggler Podcast, Bahir and Uma with you, and today we're going to be reviewing The Nun 2. Back in the habit. Hey. No, that's Sister Act 2. The Nun wasn't my favorite movie in the Conjuring universe. I don't know if you've seen it, Bahi. Did you miss that one? Oh, I caught it before we went to see this movie. Right. I actually did some homework. What did you think of that movie? Because I thought that movie had too many jump scares and the storyline didn't work it just didn't feel developed enough i think the first one oddly enough felt rushed the first one felt like a i won't say it felt like a half-baked idea but the way it opens with this weird sort of flash forward or scenes from the conjuring film and then jumps backwards into 1950s France where we first meet Sister Irene and it was okay. It was completely forgettable. Yes. I think it's my thing. You know what it is as well? Now that I've thought about it, I've seen two nun movies and I still don't know what the fuck's going on. I get the big thing, right? There's a there's a there's a hole to to hell that's been opened or disturbed. The reason the nun looks like the nun, I get. But it just still feels like... Burr. You know what I mean? I don't feel like I know the nun problem. <laughs> the nun problem? <laughs> I think that's the problem with a lot of the spin-offs in the Conjuring verse. So the nun obviously is a part of the Conjuring universe. James Wan's Conjuring universe. And the Patrick Wilson Vera Farmiga movies are the strongest ones because I think they're rooted in the best idea. These, right. This idea of these paranormal investigators, the Warrens, their true life adventures. Everyone loves a true life ghost story, right? Meanwhile, the spin-off, the Annabelles, the Nuns, the La La Ronas, they tend to be rooted a lot more in the supernatural and in the religious. And I think by losing that based on a true story thing, you lose quite a bit because whether it's true or not, there is enough of a mythology, enough of a rabbit hole that you can go into after watching one of those Conjuring movies. Now, my problem with The Nun isn't that I don't get it. I mean, it just feels pretty generic for the most part. And by that, I mean, it feels like every other horror film that centered around the Catholic Church. I kept waiting for Russell Crowe to pop up in this movie, which I would have absolutely loved, even though the timelines don't match up. But my problem with The Nun is that it feels less and less about actually scaring me and more about building up this conjuring mythology. Mm. And I get it. I get that they've given away what Valak looks like in the last film. So the demon isn't going to be as scary as the first time and you can't just rely on jump scares. And so this movie does away with that completely. It doesn't even pretend to hide what Valak looks like, which is very smart on the part of the filmmakers because, you know, we're not stupid. But at the same time, there is very little in this movie that will creep you out. Instead... It relies a lot more on, ah, oh, there is this mystery in the Catholic Church and this saint and her eyes and all of this stuff. And so it's kind of rooted in all of this Catholic and Christian mythology, but it defeats the purpose of being a horror film. Despite not having seen any of The Conjuring, this the Nun series of films feel like supportive material to The Conjuring. If you don't watch these, you will still enjoy The Conjuring. But if you don't watch The Conjuring, you may not enjoy these as much. Yeah, you may not care about these movies in any way. And I think that's where I found myself. They did something in The Nun 2 which I did not like. I didn't like that there is this connection to Sister Irene now. 
Whereas in the first one, it was just her and Father Burke, I think it was, who went on this demon hunting mission, which was cool. Like if the second one was a bit more of that, okay. But suddenly there's this link to her history and she's the chosen one and blah de blah de blah And I think the building of that mythology, the building of that history makes it feel like they're trying to prop up something that's not as important as it is. Yeah, Damien Bashir clearly didn't want to come back for this one, so Father Burke is dead. What? How? I just thought that was great. They just killed, just like straight off, like it's not that he's unavailable at the moment or we're just sending you. We're having our... Di- nope, he's dead. He's done. He's out. No See longer, no more. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Done. Yeah. That's it. I did prefer the Nun 2 to the first one just because I thought the story was richer... And the characterizations were slightly better. And the thing I think that carried me through it, and the thing I liked the most, is Tessa Farmiga as Sister Irene. Because Mm. I think that's some very clever casting. She looks like she could pass off for a nun, for an actual sister. But at the same Mm. time, like there's a purity in her face. But at the same time... When face to face with the demon, there is a badassness as well. Like yeah. she's not afraid. Just like Russell Crowe's Father Amors in yeah. The Pope's Exorcist, he doesn't actually display fear in the face of the demon. And I think Tessa Farmiga's character does the same thing. It's it's a very good casting and some very good acting on her part. And that's what really carried me through this otherwise Okay la, humdrum movie. It's really nothing special. I think if it wasn't branded as being a part of the Conjuring verse, this would be just another movie that falls by the wayside. A good word is mediocre. It's not that it was bad. I wasn't bored. I didn't find any problems with the story. It was just fine la. It was mediocre, right? A solid 5 out of 10 la. (laughs) Solid 5 out of 10. Like no complaints at all. Because the acting is good, the characterizations are great. It was shot really well. There are some scenes in particular that I thought were quite clever. There's a particular moment at a newsstand with some magazines that I really enjoyed. I thought that was new. I feel like I hadn't seen that before in Correct. some way. Yeah, But it wasn't enough. Those moments were too far and too few between. And I think that was the problem. Most of the movie felt like stuff that we'd seen before. And I don't know why, but Valak doesn't feel as imposing or as intimidating as a demon. And I think it's because of what he does. Like, he doesn't do enough. Yeah, he goes around murdering members of the clergy in strange ways, like setting them on fire and dropping a hook on them and hanging them out a window, fine. But I don't know, it just doesn't feel cruel or scary in any way. This wasn't a demon that was going to linger with me after the movie was done. It was also weird that I didn't feel like the nun herself, or itself rather, was particularly... After having seen both films, I don't feel like the nun is the big boss. It doesn't feel like the big demon at the end of the battle. The right? nun feels like a general because it never really shows up to do much. It sort of pops out of walls and pictures and scares you a little bit, but it doesn't really feel like, oh no, it's the guy. Also, I'm not sure how his geolocation works hmm. with the nun. Because yeah. there are times when it seems that this thing is tied into a physical person We won't spoil anything. But yet, in my head, if it's tied to a physical person, wouldn't it have to be in the vicinity of that person because it is possessing that person? Yeah. But then it can show up an hour away in some other village and torment Sister Irene. And I'm like, wait, Mm. can he just be everywhere at any time? How does this work? But also, like, we didn't get any of that special connection with just Irene in the first one no why is it suddenly like you go through some people because she papers. defeated it one time so now it's like I know who you are 
Yeah, but we didn't get any. I mean, this is a story thing, lah. I guess it's just retconning, lah. It's retconning, ah. Even then, like in the first one, it never really felt like Sister Irene came in clutch because in the first one, Maurice comes back and helps her, right? And it was she spat the blood of Christ on him. No, but again, it never felt like she comes in clutch. You know, she never. It never feels yes. like because she's got super special things. That she can do these things, that she can slam dunk in the nun's face. For me, that's the one thing that's missing in all of these modern horror incarnations. In that, no one seems to have cracked a Chucky or a Freddy or a Jason in the same way. So, like the Conjuring mm. are the adventures of the Warrens, and it's always a different ghost that they're trying to fight or a different demon. And then in the Insidious movies. <sighs> It's about a place as opposed to a singular demon. Yes, that singular demon is there, but it's also about this further whatever. Even in this one, they're trying to do it. They tried to do it with Annabelle. They're trying to do it with Valak. And I'm just like, I don't know. It doesn't have the same impact. I remember Freddy being scary, coming back over and over again, and Jason just not dying. And there was something about those horror archetypes those horror characters that those movies set forth that really worked even in the shitty versions of those movies because they had so many sequels the individual character remained scary no you're right that's hard to pull off and i don't think any of the modern franchises have done it and i think that's why you have a chucky series to keep rebooting stuff right you've got a reboot yeah. of halloween and all of this stuff because yeah, no one struck gold with another amazing character, amazing villainous, demonic bad guy that'll just make you shit your pants. Like, that hasn't happened in a while. But here's the thing. I don't know if I need that. You know what I want? I want the further adventures of Father Amors. Just Russell Crowe riding his little Lambretta from small Italian town to small Italian town doing these exorcism i want them to be big exorcisms i want them to be like big difficult ones but that's all i want i just want a series of oh you know what it is i want a hercule poirot but but yeah ghosts and father amos and russell crowe and i wouldn't mind seeing one of those movies with sister irene either because i think the character yeah. is interesting enough i think having a nun yeah. in that position is pretty cool too yeah. but we don't get enough of it in this movie. Like there was that cool moment where the vatican sends someone to talk to her because she is the only one who can help and I was like, oh, are they building to something similar like Father of Morse? Are they doing mm. something there? But no, it's a two-minute moment. And then it's just kind of brushed aside and they move along with the rest of the film. It doesn't feel like there's enough of that. You were right the first time, Bahe. It's not terrible. It's an all right movie. And it'll scratch your horror itch if you have one. Yeah. If you like these sorts of movies, if you love The Conjuring Universe and are a completist, then by all means, go and watch this movie. But our only caveat is we didn't find it scary and you might not find it scary. So you're not going to get the kick you want if you're a horror movie freak. Yes, correct. The Nun 2 opens in Malaysian cinemas tomorrow. That's Thursday, September 7th. Let us know what you think once you've seen it. You know how to reach out. Goggler MY, all of our social media feeds. You can also email us on podcast at goggler.my or send us a WhatsApp on the Goggler hotline 012 524 5208. If you drop us a line on any one of those platforms, we'll send you a link to join our brand new Discord server where you can chat with us in real time. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Goggler Podcast. <laughs>